salt, one of the most common ingredients in our diets, yet it barely gets any attention. Most of what we hear is that we should eat less of it, but is reducing salt intake always the best advice? To answer this question, let's start with an unusual case from a 1940 paper by Lawson Wilkins, describing a child who had an insatiable craving for salt. The child, starting at just 11 months old, vomited almost everything, except his mother's milk. At the advice of doctors, his parents tried giving him crackers, but he threw them up too, except for the salt. The boy began licking the salt off the crackers, and eventually refused to eat anything without the salt shaker present. He even ate plain salt by dipping his finger into it. Over time his salt consumption rose to about a teaspoon of pure table salt per day. This level of intake would be equivalent to an adult consuming 20 to 30 extra grams of salt per day, far above the recommended 5.75 grams per day, according to American Dietary Guidelines. When the boy was finally admitted to the hospital at age 3, doctors placed him on a low-salt diet, but after only 7 days he tragically passed away. The cause? Adrenal insufficiency, a condition in which the body doesn't produce enough hormones to regulate salt. His strong salt craving was actually his body's way of trying to stay alive. This case shows us something critical. Salt isn't just a flavor enhancer, it's essential for life. This case highlights a crucial fact. Salt is essential to life. While most healthy people don't need as much salt as that child, salt plays an integral role in the body's functioning. In 2005, the U.S. government set the maximum sodium intake at 2,300 milligrams, or about 5.75 grams of salt, per day. Studies suggested that reducing daily salt intake by half a teaspoon could prevent 92,000 heart attacks and save $20 billion in healthcare costs annually. The logic behind this recommendation is that excess sodium pulls fluid into the blood, raising blood volume and increasing blood pressure, which can lead to heart disease over time. Yet despite the steady reduction in salt consumption since the 1940s, the prevalence of hypertension has steadily increased. With all the efforts to cut salt intake, why is high blood pressure still on the rise? It's time to explore the history of salt consumption and whether salt is really the villain it's been made out to be. Historically, humans consumed far more salt than we do today. Before refrigeration, salt was the primary means of preserving food, especially in Europe where salt intake was as high as 40 to 100 grams per day during the 1500s. By the time of World War II, Western societies were consuming around 15 to 17 grams of salt daily. After the war, as refrigeration replaced salt for preservation, consumption dropped to about 9 grams per day. Surprisingly, while salt consumption decreased, rates of hypertension tripled over the next few decades. If salt were the main culprit behind high blood pressure, this trend doesn't make sense. Moreover, the drastic changes in how much salt people ate over time didn't correlate with a surge in heart disease until much later in history. The first recorded case of heart disease wasn't until the mid-1600s, long after people had been consuming huge amounts of salt. Looking beyond the West, other countries present similar contradictions. For instance, South Koreans consume roughly 4,000 milligrams of sodium per day, almost double what the US guidelines recommend due to their love for kimchi and other salty foods. Despite this, South Korea has some of the lowest coronary heart disease rates in the world, according to 2014 data from the World Health Organization. This phenomenon, often called the Korean paradox, isn't unique. Several countries with high salt intakes also show low rates of heart disease, challenging the belief that salt is always harmful. Countries like Japan, France, and Italy, where salt consumption remains relatively high, also boast some of the lowest heart disease rates. The data suggests that sodium alone might not be the sole factor contributing to heart disease. Other factors like overall diet, lifestyle, and genetics play a huge role. Dr. James DeNicolantonio in his book, argues that reducing salt intake may be unnecessary and even harmful. Salt supports crucial bodily functions, it aids digestion, is essential for proper heart function, and helps maintain strong bones. Without enough sodium the brain and body suffer. Low sodium levels can cause a range of problems from headaches and muscle weakness to seizures and coma, but it doesn't stop there. Salt is crucial for proper nerve function. It helps transmit signals between the brain and other parts of the body. That's why extreme sodium imbalances can lead to neurological issues. And for athletes, salt plays a critical role in keeping the body hydrated during intense physical activity. When we sweat, we lose both water and salt and replenishing both is essential for maintaining performance and preventing cramps or dizziness. 
One reason why salt has remained a vital part of our diet is that our bodies are highly efficient at regulating sodium levels. Through a process called osmoregulation, the kidneys maintain a delicate balance between water and salt. When sodium levels rise, the kidneys excrete the excess in urine. Conversely, when sodium levels are too low, the body retains salt to prevent dangerous imbalances. In fact, studies show that humans are remarkably capable of handling large amounts of salt. In one experiment, individuals consumed up to 86 grams of salt per day, and their bodies excreted nearly all of it without any issues. This ability suggests that our bodies are more adept at managing excess salt than dealing with salt deficiency. Although excessive salt intake can have negative effects, the risks associated with insufficient salt are more severe. In a 2014 study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, researchers found that consuming between 3 and 6 grams of sodium per day was associated with the lowest risk of death and cardiovascular events. Surprisingly, consuming less than 3 grams per day, closer to the recommended limits, actually increased health risks. Many animals and humans alike have an innate drive to seek out salt, as demonstrated in studies where individuals with sodium deficiencies craved salty foods. Similarly, patients with chronic fatigue syndrome often benefit from increasing their sodium intake, improving their mood and energy levels. If humans are naturally inclined to consume around 3 to 4 grams of sodium per day, why do government guidelines suggest lower limits? Part of the reason may be outdated health concerns. However, evidence suggests that for most people, a sodium intake of 3 to 6 grams per day, about 7 to 15 grams of salt, is ideal. Those who sweat excessively or are on low-carbohydrate diets may need even more to maintain balance. Beyond that, our modern obsession with restricting salt might be overlooking the fact that our bodies are incredibly adept at managing the mineral. Our built-in systems have evolved over millennia to handle fluctuations in salt intake, and for most people salt may not be the enemy it's made out to be. In conclusion, salt is much more than a simple seasoning. It's a vital nutrient that supports the body's most critical functions. While excessive salt intake can cause problems, most healthy people are more likely to suffer from too little salt than too much. Instead of fearing salt, it's important to recognize our body's natural need for it and find a balance that works for our individual health needs. Stay tuned, as in future discussions, we'll explore even more science behind why reducing salt intake may not be as beneficial as commonly believed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we post a new video. Share your thoughts in the comments below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover next. See you in the next video.